Hello, today I'm going to show you how to hook up an SD card reader shield to an Arduino Mega. And some of the things I'm going to work with on the card are how to make a file, remove a file, write to and read from a file, list a file, make a directory, change a directory, remove a directory, and multiple opening multiple files. I uh, open uh, 20 at once. And lastly, I will show you an error handler uh, routine that I use to help trap some of the uh, code uh, errors that happen with the card. So let's get started. Let, one thing that we need to note right off the bat is that with the shield, um, you need to disconnect the power first. And then you can remove the chip, and then you put the chip into the side of your computer right here. It goes in a little shield like this, and the micro SD chip looks like that. So you put that in, and I want to show you uh, the files on here. There, I use one file called test and inside of test there's a bunch of text just uh, I think it's some sort of speech I download from the internet and what I do is I randomly pick out data in this file of, of about 10 or 12 characters and I write that to some of the files um, on the on the SD micro SD card and I do that by uh, reading the text file and then writing to a random file that I've created. So now that we've done that, I will show you again how this uh, actually works. So we put this back in, we hook up the power, and then from there, I open up the COM port and I hit reset and it will initialize the card. It will start to write files and here, initially started out by trying to remove a file that did not exist. And therefore, that was the tone that you hear. Every time you hear a tone, it's trying to do something that would, be, would normally be an error and that would stop the code from running. But I don't want the code to stop running. I want to continue exercising the card. Also, you can see over here that there's a red and a yellow light. And the red light is it's writing a file and the yellow light means it's reading from a file. So right now it's writing to a file, and here it says, uh, there it is right there, um, reading, it's reading the directory. So that's why the red light went on. So, or the yellow light went on. So here we have some data that's being written. It's trying to open multiple files, and when it says it's opening multiple files, it's actually opening 20 files at once and then closing them one at a time. So 20 files are actually open. I use a random letter generator. So it's creating directories that are in the alphabet, A through Z, and it's creating text files, A through Z. Uh, the naming for the text file has to be eight characters, period, three characters. Uh, I had some problems, uh, some errors were cropping up. You can see the data log being created. Uh, I called it data log 22, and that was too many characters. Data log 22.txt is too many. So that didn't work out so well. Um, in addition to this, I basically use a large case statement, and I generate uh, a case 1 through 9 for each of the different functions, whether to make a file, read to a file, delete a file. And you can see here it listed. And... Basically, uh, it does it randomly. Um, I have had this run uh, consecutively about 5,000 reads, writes, creates, deletes without crashing. Um, so typically what I do is I disable the, the error handler from stopping the program from running. I let it continue to run and write and do as much as it can uh, 5,000 times. And so overall, it's very consistent and it works very well. The issue I had also that I want to note is this is also on a Mega. 
Um, initially, I'd written it for an Uno, and the Uno immediately ran out of memory. It started bumping up to the maximum uh, length, and then this list directory would start losing characters and files and names at, at the end, because this is going out three levels. I've had it go out like 20 levels, and then it gets really crazy. But uh, what happens is the, the last level tends to start to disappear when you start losing memory. So I started using the, um, the uh, Mega, and that gives me 10 times the amount of memory as an Uno. Um, in addition to that, I also show in this sketch, which I'll show in a second, um, how to save SRAM, which is kind of nice. Uh, that you use SRAM primarily whenever you um, uh, are doing a print statement or something along that line, and it is far smaller than regular memory. So let's cause this to fail. And I disconnected the power. And it's going to air out with not being, there we go. And so I'm taking the SD card out. I'm going to close this down. And then I want to show you on here. that it created all these files. And I'll shut that off. There we go. And so all these files, here's some directories that it created, and here's all the data files it created. And some of the data files have text in them. This one has text that it took from the test file. Here's another one that has some text, and the text is random. I just wanted to write some nonsense into the file. Uh, some of the directories uh, are empty. Some of them have other files in them. Here's some uh, the S directory, and there's nothing there. Uh, I don't think there's anything there either, and it hasn't had a chance to write anything to this text file. But it created a subdirectory in some of these other directories. So here's one that has four directories. And um, so you can create subdirectories within subdirectories. And like I said, I've had this go out 20 levels. It can be quite a bit. So let's look at the code. Um, I will show you a close-up of the board running. Um, I will also show you a fritzing diagram of how to wire this up. Um, and there is also, I will include some links possibly of where I got information pertaining to the, um, the SD card and how to hook it up and that sort of thing. Uh, some things to keep in mind, other than you must unplug it when you want to take that card out. Um, and that you, the, the Uno, you tend to run out of memory pretty quick. Um, some things you must do for the SD library to work is you must include, um, on the Uno, you must have pin 10 as an output, and on the Mega you must have pin 53. Um, it uses 3.3 volts, and uh, I think that's probably about all we need for right now, so let's go ahead and look at the code more closely. Okay, so here we have the code for controlling the SD, uh, micro SD card. Um, it's a large program because there's lots of different functions for uh, uh, making files, reading files, deleting files, and directories, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to move quickly on this. I don't want it to be too long. But there's some key things that will help you uh, uh, with programming the card that will set up variables. That was really kind of what I was focusing on when I did this. Um, 
the sketch. And the sketch is basically just a large case statement inside the void loop, and it just goes over and over and over. But there's a few things you need to set up ahead of time. So let's go over those. Uh, first, you have to load the um, SD uh, library, and then you need to set up these pins. Uh, this is for the Mega. Uh, and uh, that's what I used because the Uno, I ran out of space, uh, memory space really quick. And in fact, I had to reprogram um, SRAM for uh, print statements using the F uh, command. So I'll show you that too, which will save um, SRAM because on the Mega, there's only like 8K of SRAM and you can burn through that pretty quick if you have a lot of printing to do. So uh, these pins, uh, the MISO, or, uh, I'm sorry, the, the MOSI uh, pin is uh, master out, slave in. Uh, the MISO is master in, slave out. And the pin for the MOSI is pin 51. Uh, for the MISO, it's pin 50. And for the clock, it's 52. Uh, the chip select for the Mega is 53. These are all preset, and you've got to use them. The UNO is different, and uh, you can go to the Arduino uh, reference library, and look there to see what pins um, you need to use. So um, I also set up the uh, yellow LED goes on during a read operation, which you saw, and then the red LED goes on during a write operation. I, I wanted different colors to indicate what was transpiring while the code was running. So that being said, um, you always want to make sure that you disconnect the power to the SD uh, card shield uh, prior to removing the chip because you, I read online that you can uh, burn out the chip. And lastly, this statement right here, these two statements, um, you use the file name dot, st, uh, dot c underscore str parentheses to pass a variable from the file name to the file open. Um, what's nice about that is um, it allows you to set up a variable file name. You don't have to actually put in quotes the file name, like quote test dot txt end quote. You can put a you can just put file name dot c underscore string and then set this variable file name uh, up above, say up here somewhere or somewhere else in the code to um, be whatever file name you want to use at that time. Now. Um, if you need to concatenate the file name, this command right here, this variable right here, is helpful. And uh, you use it to pass a string variable to um, concatenate the file name. Uh, and that makes it really easy because you, get, you keep getting an error every time you compile. And if you use this, um, you can concatenate strings. So for instance, you could have data log uh, plus x, where x is a for loop. Uh, from 1 to, let's say, 10 or 20, and then you would wind up creating uh, data log 1, data log 2, data log 3, and you need this statement to do that. So those were the two statements, uh, variables, that actually made the whole program run very smoothly and easily. Um, now here in this section, I set up... Uh, a lot of variables, I set up the baud rate, I have a buzzer, the red LED, yellow LED, I have a state because uh, every time I do a function like read or write, I set a flag so that uh, the red light will go, uh, the red flag is high or the red flag is low to turn it off and then I pass it to a function that turns on the LED or turns it off because every function uses the LED so I just put it into a separate function so I didn't have to use up that much code. Uh, here we have a strip. We have a file name as a string. Um, TV remote option is just a is something for another project. You can actually remove that. Um, that it, it just is going to be a string that I concatenate into uh, and write to a file. Um, here's data input is also uh, a variable that holds the um, uh, test data that I read from uh, a test text file. So I, I read from the SD card a file that's on there, uh, 10 or, or 20 characters, and I put them, I concatenate them into uh, the data input variable. And then I write the data input variable to a file like data log one dot text or data log dot two text. 
Um, here's a variable I use for testing uh, the case statement. Uh, all of these uh, count uh, 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 variables, I count how many times I do a read, how many times I do a write. These are all the functions I've created for this sketch. Uh, there's a loop counter to, to allow me to loop through uh, and run multiple instances of these. Um, there's a root counter that you need for uh, uh, keeping track when you change directory. And of course the CS pin, which is the chip select pin for the Mega. Next, um, this is the file statement you need to create for my file. Um, this allows you to write to my file on the, on the disk. Um, I actually created, you can see here, 20 files. Uh, because I want to open 20 files in my multiple file uh, open. Uh, I was curious how many files you could actually have open at one time. Um, I was able to open 20. Uh, next, uh, instead of trying to type in each of these 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I created an array called My Files, which is plural, and I put all those files into that, um, that array. So now I can just say My Files sub 1, uh, sub 2, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4, sub 5, and I can directly access these files. Now we go down to the setup, and the setup is straightforward. You start the begin uh, baud rate, you set your, your, pin, your CS pin output, and this is required by the library. I have a question mark here at the time, I wasn't sure, but it is required whether you use that pin or not. Um, Next, uh, you have your pinout modes for the LEDs and the buzzer. Uh, then I come down here and, and I initialize uh, the SD card and I give it a little time to find it. Um, I then check to see if it actually found the card. And this I got from the Arduino reference library. Uh, it's a straight copy. Uh, if it doesn't find it, um, I go to my error handler re routine and I pass it error code 9. And error code 9 will say, hey, no card is uh, inserted. Insert a card. Um, otherwise, if it doesn't get trapped here, uh, because the error handler, when it runs, it halts the program altogether. So I don't have to worry about an else st statement. If it goes to the error handler, everything stops. Otherwise, I can, it's safe to assume that uh, the initialization completed and uh, I give a little tone on the buzzer uh, uh, um, to uh, um, tell me that, hey, we're good. I set the root because I need that for my change directory. And you only want to do it when you first come in because in the loop that could change. The, you could change a directory and write to a subdirectory. Um, I turn off the LEDs and then we start the loop. And here's where the real program starts. Um, the loop is essentially a very large uh, case uh, statement and each function um, is a different case statement. So here's list file, here's change directory, here's make file. Um, so, and there's nine case statements that you can see here. Okay, and then there's some uh, code that I, some calculations I do down here, how many times I called list directory, how many times I called change directory. I just want to make sure that it's exercising each of the functions um, adequately. I want to make sure I don't miss one. Also, uh, loop counter, you can make this 20, you can make it 2,000. I've actually had loop counter set, set to um, 5,000, and I've had it run through this this loop 5,000 times, creating, deleting, removing files, writing to files, uh, changing directories, and um, it takes a long time, but it does work, so it's very solid. But back here at the top, I set the loop counter uh, to one, and uh, um, I just print out what loop I'm in, I, pre I create a random variable from one to, to nine, and the variable is um, each one of these case statements, because here's the, the variable. Uh, 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 variable. Um, and so uh, for this statement right here, um, I put this in so that I could actually test a particular case over and over and over to see, make sure I, I trap everything I need to trap and make it work correctly. You can remove this. In this case, I was using uh, uh, variable set to nine, which is uh, 
case statement number nine, I was running through the multiple files opened uh, routine. So that's all the functions. Um, they, there's nine of them. Basically, I print out each case name and I say what it, what what what, what, I'm, what function I'm doing, and then I just call the function, and then I bump the counter, and that's it. At the end of this, uh, the loop counter will equal 20. It'll print out all this uh, information. I did a, a read from file. You don't need to uh, have that. That was uh, something I was testing earlier. That can be removed. That's why it's commented out. And then... <coughs> While it's true, stop. It'll just sit here and stop the program or halt the program. It'll just hang. And that's basically the whole program. And what we have here next are, um, I've broken each of the um, functions into separate, uh, each of the operations into separate functions. Here we have write to a file. And this basically opens two files simultaneously. Um, because you have to have one to read from and one to write to. And so I set the red LED state so that it turns on the, the LED. I print that I'm, this is a debug that can be removed. It just says I'm writing to the file. I open my file sub zero, which is from above, uh, is just my files. And I set it equal to act, an actual file that I have already on the card called data1.txt. Or, or I'm gonna create data1.txt. And this is a open data file to write to. And that's why this is a write and not a read. Uh, like this one's a read. Read statements are different than write statements uh, using the SD library. Uh, the read starts at the beginning of the file and starts reading. The write command starts um, at the end of the file and starts to write. So if there's already data in data one, it'll go to the end and append the data. It, you don't want it to go to the beginning of the file, otherwise it will overwrite what you've already written and that wouldn't be good. So um, I open this data file, um, I check to see if data file exists um, and if it doesn't, um, I then give it an error handler for code and stop uh, using, uh, stop the, the program from running. Uh, next, I go to my files one and I set that equal to test text and basically, um, let the truck go by, and uh, I set it to text and then what I do is if it doesn't exist, I give it error handler four and I stop the program. So if they both exist, we then go down to here and we do a read a sample of text text from the file to write to the new file. So my files one, I seek 10 positions offset in the file um, to read. It says here, set input file position to be read at startup. And for i equals one, uh, if i is less than 10, increment i. And what I do is data input, which I mentioned above, is going to be um, a variable that will store each character after I read one at a time from my files one. And my files one is test text. So it reads 10 characters starting at position 10, and it reads each character and puts it into data input. And so I'm just reading this text from uh, test text. I'm re reading this data from text text and putting it into data input. Um, this is uh, this right here is not uh, um, uh, uh, this is just to create a random file position. I was doing that for a while. That's a that's a debug. You can remove that. Uh, TV remote is just all I'm doing is really just capturing this text. It's another variable um, that is not necessary. Uh, you can change this to say something else, and you can also use a different variable. I'm actually doing a different. Uh, uh, testing here. So use to index the seek option on the SD card. So um, instead of hard coding seek 10, I now use X. So it'll be seek sub X. And you can see my file zero, which is this text right here. I mean that data file right there. I am going to seek an offset of first zero right here, and then I'm gonna write this TV remote option, which is the word power one, or, or one power. And then I'm gonna write that in the file at the beginning of the file, which is position zero. 
Then I go to position 10 and I write the word data input, which is this, this variable I created from reading my files. That's the actual data that I read from the text text, the test text file and wrote it into the data text file. Uh, and then I seek at position 20 offset and 30 offset uh, these, uh, these words here. Uh, and that's it. And then I give it a time to write. I then close the files here and here. And uh, then I turn off the, LED, the red LED. And that's it. That's all there is to writing to a file. It's that simple. Uh, the next variable, uh, the next uh, function is multiple files open. I wanted to see how many files I could actually physically open and um, at one time and I, I success successfully opened 20 files. Now I guess you could do more, maybe 200, but it would, that would take a long time to, to write that in and I thought 20 was plenty. So I set the red LED to sh indicate that uh, you know we're doing uh, or we're accessing the file and uh, I set my files zero uh, to open the test text again for writing. And um, I then uh, use an array of my files to open and name each text file to write to. So um, for y equals one to 20, uh, my files one, I open data and then I take the string, that's where this comes in handy, the string of y, uh, so it's going to be data 1, data 2, data 3, dot, 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 data 20. And then I append text, uh, test, text, txt, um, to it. So then I will be creating or opening uh, my files 1 will have data 1 text. My files 2 will, have, will be pointing to data 2 text and so on all the way up to data 20 and I'm opening those for um, uh, writing to them so once they're all open it comes down to here and I read a sample of text text file uh, data to write to each open file so all those 20 files I need some some data to put in them and I go for I uh, this this counter here is for each of the files um, I exclude the text test, which is at position zero, because I don't want to write to that. And, <coughs> excuse me. And I open my files, uh, sub zero. I seek a random position, and I go as far as the file size minus a uh, hundred. So I can go anywhere in that file. And um, file zero is actually my test file. And the test file is about 15K in size, so I don't want it to go to the very end. And I try to read, um, you know, 10 characters, and then I, I run out of, I get an error or, or something. So I just offset the end of the file by 100 to give me some buffer room. Next, I read 10 characters, I equals uh, uh, 1 to less than 11. And here's our data input again. Uh, same character, my files. I read the characters from the test file. And once I've read 10 characters at some random seek offset, um, I then write my file sub x, which is up here, one through, one through 20, data input string. See, that's where that dot c underscore str works great because you can use it for any sort of variable. In this case, we're using data input. And this will um, write to the open file. Uh, whatever my files is, which is um, uh, created up here, uh, my file sub one will print this data variable information that I read from uh, the 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 text file the test file up here into each of the twenty files. It then will uh, print uh, one file, and that'll do it through all twenty. And then I reset the data input each time so that it, it doesn't concatenate and get really big because this statement right here will actually concatenate the data for each of the 20 files. And by the time you get to the 20th file, you're reading huge blocks of data. Uh, next, we need to close all the open files uh, just uh, from X equals zero to 20. Uh, my files uh, um, um, 
uh, close statement here. And you remember it goes from zero to 19, not one to 20. Um, we delay to give it some time to close. And then we check to make sure the files were created. And we circulate from zero to 20 or zero to 19. Uh, file name equals my files, sub name. And this is the, the command uh, for assigning the file name to a file name variable. Uh, it'll list the files that were created up here under data plus one text. It'll uh, set it to um, file name. And if it doesn't exist, if it doesn't exist, this file name, and this is where you have to use that character pointer file name dot C underscore string. Again, you use it over and over. Uh, you have an error, error three. And then you stop the execution because one of the files wasn't created. Uh, if everything is, works well, then you come down here, you reset the, L, the red LED to turn it off, and you're done. Uh, the next command is the read from file function. We, this is a read, so we turn on the yellow LED. Uh, we open the data, data one uh, file to be read. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we then go to error handler four and say, hey, the file's not there, can't read it. Otherwise, if it is, um, while this uh, file is available, we wanna read until the end of the file. So we start at the beginning of my file zero, which is data one. And we serially write my file zero a read. So we would read, we would read my file and get that, read the data from the SD card and then write it to the, to the contents to the serial monitor. This is only so you can see it on the serial monitor. So basically um, you're reading it, you're just gonna display it to the serial monitor. This basically reads the character and then this prints that red character to the screen. And then you close the file and give it some time to close. Uh, and then you turn off the LED. And that's all the read file does. I could, you could put a X here and do a loop and, uh, uh, or, or down here, uh, down here actually, you could do a loop and write out all the context of all the files that you've created of all the 20 if you want, but that would just take too long. So I didn't do that. So now we go on to change directory and here we can change a directory. I haven't really told you how to make a directory, but here let's, I'll just start with change directory. The change directory function, uh, it's the only function that modifies the root variable. That's, that's critical because you don't want the root to be modified throughout the program. You may wind up changing the root and then all of a sudden you're trying to save data in a weird place. Only modify the root in one directory. And I do that in the change directory. So here we generate a file name um, and um, this remove was a, something I had to remove later. Um, it's not uh, anything that's, it shouldn't be there. I should have taken that out. I meant to remove this comment. But um, a random I is a random letter from uh, capital A to capital Z. So the file names are gonna be A test, B test, C test, D test, all the way to Z test. And I can, here's the file name. Uh, I convert I into a character. And so now file name is A. Uh, and I check, uh, once I have the, the file name, um, I need to concatenate, um, uh, that's the, uh, actually the directory name. This won't be test, I, I take that back. That's, this is the uh, change directory. So this is just gonna be a directory name. Directories are A through Z also. So that might be a little confusing. Um, so uh, if the root counter is less than two, uh, here, you c I only go out two subdirectories. I have the root, and then I have directory A, and inside directory A is directory B, and then that's it. Directory B can have a bunch of files. I had this out like 20 one time, and it goes way out. You can't, it's hard to manage when you get 20 or 30 subdirectories, but it still worked fine, so that was kind of nice to test. So here I set the root, and I say the root plus the file name A, which is the character string, plus another backslash. So root is a backslash, so uh, this now concatenates slash a slash as the new root. So we have efficiently, eff effectively went from a slash, the, the, the root directory, to the a subdirectory. And uh, root counter, I, I increment this here, and um, uh, I keep track of that because uh, I need to 
check up here to make sure I don't go out too far. I print out what it is, and then I print the root. Uh, I then check here if that root, ex if that subdirectory um, file exists. If it doesn't, for instance, I'm trying to change to a directory 17 or, or one or data five or something, uh, it, it'll trap it here saying directory doesn't exist and you can't, you can't um, uh, uh, change to a directory that isn't there and that's important to know. Else, uh, root, if it's um, not a, a directory that you, uh, uh, if it's uh, greater than, if it's equal to two, uh, we don't want to create another root. Uh, we don't want to create another subdirectory because it gets too long. We rename root back to the home, the top root, and uh, we set root counter to one, and we print out the root, and now we're back to just a slash. And that's the end of the change directory. Um, I didn't... Uh, 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 turn on any uh, LEDs for this because um, you're, I guess I could have, I just didn't, I, I didn't feel that it was uh, necessary because you're really not accessing the card per se, you're just changing a directory. But you could put a, a red or a, a yellow LED there, turn on if you want. So next we have make directory. Um, we turn on, since we're writing to the file, we need to turn on the red LED. Uh, we create a, a random I from, uh, this is uh, uh, A and this is Z. Uh, file name is, uh, which is really directory name, but I used file name. Uh, the letter A, let's say, and then we come down here, file name plus root, and uh, then we print that out. Uh, and then here we use the command make directory, which is an SD library command, uh, character, file name, the, the subdirectory, I mean, uh, uh, or the directory name uh, gets generated, and it could be A through Z. Uh, we let that write it, we close the file. Then we go back and make sure that it actually wrote it to the disk. And if it didn't, we get error three. And then we turn the red LED off. So here we make a file. Since we're writing to the disk, we do red LED state again, turn it on, uh, we generate a uh, another letter I from A to Z. Uh, we set that to, we set that file name uh, to the uh, to root plus the the letter A through Z plus text. And we sign that to file name. Uh, we set um, my file zero uh, to open uh, the file here we're gonna write and we close it here. So um, since we are opening my files, and you can open any file you want. Um, it, it doesn't have to be zero. I just use zero. It can be any number zero through 19. You just need any file to actually physically write the, this open statement uh, file name to the card. Where all we're doing is putting the new created file name onto the card. And then we're, we're closing it and we're using my file zero to do that. You can use, like I said, you can be zero through 19, be anyone you want. Uh, then we check to see that the file was created. Uh, and uh, if it wasn't, we give it error code three. Otherwise we just turn off the red LED and we're done writing uh, the file. Next, we wanna remove a file. Uh, we tr since we're accessing the card again, we turn on the uh, red LED. Uh, we generate uh, a letter fr from A to Z. We assign the file name root plus the letter plus text. Um, then we um, print the file name here so we can see it on the screen. And since we're trying to remove a file, we check to see if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we give an error code one saying file does not exist. You can't delete something that doesn't exist. Otherwise, it's there. We use the SD library remove command. We give it a character file name dot C underscore string. Uh, you must use this uh, for it to work because this uh, command will be upset if you don't use this variable just like that. And we remove it. We give it time to write. 
we close it and give it time to close and then um, we turn off the LED. Uh, you could do another exist to verify down here to verify that it actually um, deleted it because then you could say if it doesn't exist code worked correctly else error not error eight uh, file was not create was not removed. I mean that would be another test. I didn't get to that level. Um, now we have remove directory and uh, we set the LED state, uh, we generate a random letter, we concatenate the file name, uh, we print the file name. It, and here it, we have to check to make sure uh, it exists before we delete it. Uh, if it doesn't, we say directory doesn't exist, error code 2. Otherwise, the SD library command remove directory, we give it the directory file name, uh, we remove the directory, we wait a little time for it to close, we turn off the LED, we're done. Again, you could probably do the same sort of test here to see if the directory was actually removed uh, down here. Um, I didn't do that. That was a little bit too much. Uh, it was kind of unnecessary. I might add it later, but we'll see. Um, so this list directory, I actually got um, right off of the uh, Arduino library, SD library, um, it's list directory, it's, that's exactly what it's called. I added a yellow state because I'm just reading the disk, I'm not writing to it. Uh, it doesn't open and then it calls print directory and you, I pass it here, in this case my file. I'm only doing, um, you only need one file to access the card and all I need to do is access it once to read all the directory. So um, I just use that and I use their code. And then you close it and then you turn off the yellow. The print directory is right down here. And this is this is their code. So I'm just pretty much word for word. I did include over here uh, the uh, website that uh, references all this code. So you can look it up if you want. Uh, there was a problem with the code not working quite correctly. I actually think that was attributed to using the Uno and running out of memory and maybe some pointers got messed up. Once I migrated to the Mega, it worked fine and uh, I have no disappointments with it. Uh, what was happening is the last entries in the subdirectories were not displaying. Um, so then I went online and someone actually mentioned to add this seek and the seek will, the, this is file directory, which is actually uh, my file passed to it. And um, uh, basically a, a directory, uh, this is like a my file seek zero. Remember we used it up above. It just goes to the beginning of the file. And something that's interesting is the print directory uh, function here is recursive. It actually calls itself down here. And that enables it to go down each of the subdirectories and print each subdirectory directory. And so it needs to do that. So it's a little tricky, this code. So the thing that actually stops it is it looks for, it goes into this while statement and it does it while it's true, so it'll do it forever until the entry of the next file doesn't exist. Then it rewinds the directory and it halts. Otherwise, it sets up some tabs to print off uh, the directory or if it's a file, It'll, it'll set up some tabs so you get this kind of stepping of the uh, listing of the directory. Um, it'll print the entry name, whether it's a directory or a text file, a data file. Uh, if the entry is a directory, and that's a command, um, it'll print a slash, and then it prints, uh, uh, it'll print the directory name and, key, and then call itself again to go down that directory to see if there's something in it. Else, the files have sizes, directories do not. This is now a file, so it offsets with a double tab, I believe that is, and then it serially prints the entry or directory size uh, in decimal, uh, how many bytes it is. And then it does this loop over and over until it breaks out, and then it closes the file, it's done, um, and it finishes up um, printing the directory. Next, this is the flash LED. This is what turns on and off the red LEDs. Uh, I set a state. If it's low, set it to high. Otherwise, set it to low and uh, be done. And then you write that LED state um, to the LED. And that's it, and you just return. Lastly, here's an error handler routine. 
Um, basically, this function is to trap and display error messages. If an error occurs, stop all processing. You could turn this, it's just a giant case statement. Again, I like case statements better than if statements. They're easier to control. Um, I turn off both the LEDs, because it could be in the middle of a write and hang. I turn off the LEDs. Um, I make a tone to let me know what the hell's going on. And then here on this error code number, I pass it. Um, I either say error one, file not found, uh, directory does not exist, cannot create a file. Each function, you can give each function their own error code. Uh, the number nine down here is uh, SD card did not initialize. And um, so what's nice is um, sometimes I change this to 11 and I change this to 22 and to 33 and to 44 and uh, 99. And what that allows me to do is I, in the code, in each of the functions, I trap for an error. And if I get an error, it comes down here, turns off the LEDs, plays a tone, but bypasses the case statement and continues running. And so you can turn on and off by changing the case number uh, for the errors, uh, which ones you want to trap. Let's say you want to trap just for uh, uh, an error three, you can turn the, make this a 44, this a 99, this a 22, this an 11, and so the only one that will ever run is a case three. Um, and that's the same way in, in the loop above, uh, up here, is you can actually run, change all these case statements to like double numbers, like 55, 66, 77, and leaving nine open here, and uh, with variable nine here, if you uncomment this, it will run only nine, because this will be 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, but this will still be nine, so only nine will run, even though you declare it. Or you can uh, leave this commented out, and you can use uh, uh, this random variable here, which will, um, again, if these are all, double numbers except for number nine, let's say down here, then only nine will run when a nine, a random nine is generated. And I did that a lot. I did a lot of testing. Um, so that's about it. Um, I hope this answers some of your questions. Uh, it is a big program. Uh, I will have it up on the, up on the web uh, at uh, CodeBender. So if you want to download it and play with it, you're more than welcome. I have a fritzing uh, example in the in this file also so you can see how to wire it it's very simple um, please um, share this with your friends uh, please leave a comment that would be good uh, subscribe to my playlist uh, or my channel uh, if you wish because uh, I'm gonna be writing more um, code and um, uh, one thing I did not get to but I'm starting to look at is using um, two SD cards but we'll see how that goes and so that you can write to two different uh, uh, SPI devices using the chip select option, which I, I'm still working on. So again, thank you for watching, and I hope this helps. Take care.